Thank you very much. Um, I think the next two and a half months of this institution are going to be consumed with the budget and the amount of spending. I don't think the press has done an adequate job of alerting to the public to the crisis we currently have. As we've talked before, we are headed towards the federal debt of $31 trillion being 100% of GDP. And of course, over time, as the value of the dollar changes, um, it, it sometimes makes it difficult to see exactly how bad that is. But the last time the debt was as great as the gross national product was the end of World War II. Now, at the end of World War II, America was very economically strong because Japan and Europe were flattened by the end of World War II. But even more, we knew at the end of World War II that we were going to lay off hundreds of thousands of military personnel. We know that the factories would stop building the ships and the planes and the tanks that were necessary for World War II. And therefore, we knew we were heading into a time of dramatically decreased spending. And that's exactly what happened. At the end of World War II, slowly we dropped from 100% of GDP debt equal to to down to a little over 20%. Things were really getting under control. We were a little bit over 20% during the presidency of Richard Nixon. Then things began to slowly rise again. But recently, in part with COVID and in part the completely reckless spending under President Biden, we're headed back to 100% again. But the American public has to stop and think. What well, we knew at the end of World War II, spending was inevitably going to drop. We live at a time of an aging population in which the amount of money we're spending on Medicare and Social Security is going to continue to go up if we do nothing else. Now, we sure should never, ever cut Social Security. I will not do that. And we should not be reducing any Medicare benefits, which means we have to look at the rest of the budget. And what do we see in President Biden's vision for America is? Let's look at the budget that he's already proposed for the calendar year beginning October 1st. Line after line after line does not show the cuts that are necessary and the Republican Party is prepared to make. Department of Agriculture, up 14 percent. Department of Commerce, up 11 percent. Department of Education, 13.5 percent. Department of Energy, 13.5 percent. Department of Interior, over 9 percent. Department of Labor, 11 percent. Uh, the Department of State, which is wasteful, 11 percent. Department of Treasury, 15 percent. And that Department of Treasury, of course, includes a nice uh, equity advisory board. The Environmental Protection Agency, up 19 percent. The National F uh, Science Foundation, up 18 percent. Wherever you look, President Biden has responded to the greatest debt to GDP ratio in my lifetime by raising spending 8, 9, 10 percent, about the only areas without significant increases are the military, despite President Biden, as far as I can see, doing very little to try to end the war in Ukraine, and the, the southern border. By the way, I want to repeat an anecdote to let the chair know exactly the mindset of the Biden administration when it comes to Homeland Security. I was down on that border two weeks ago. I have been a fan of drug dogs, which is so necessary given that the majority of drugs which flow across the border, killing 107,000 Americans, uh, are very handy for the Border Patrol and ICE. I asked a member of the union, Border Patrol union down there, what he thought of the dogs, figuring he would, of course, want more. He said, no, we don't need more dogs, because the last time the Border Patrol got more dogs under President Biden, they bought 38 new dogs not to snuff out drugs, not to prevent the killing of over 100,000 Americans a year. What did they do with the drug sniffing, with the new dogs? They got therapy dogs because they heard the Border Patrol was stressed. Well, of course the Border Patrol is stressed. You have so many people coming across the border, and the administration is not acting or making the policy changes necessary to control the border. 
But what can you say for an administration when presented with the possibility of new dogs at the border, feels the priority is therapy dogs, so if the Border Patrol agents feel stressed, they have a dog to pet. But that is a true story of the priorities of the Biden administration at the border. In any event, uh, as you can see, virtually many agencies, over 10 percent increases with the major uh, outlier there being defense and homeland security. Now, we should comment a little bit more on the Equity Advisory Board at Treasury. Not only does the Department of Treasury have new bureaucrats designed to determine how we are going to treat people by race or sex or sexual preference, these new boards or commissions are put throughout the new budget. And the function of these boards, I feel, is to divide America. Rather than being the America, a meritocracy that our forefathers envisioned, in which everybody is being treated equal, the Biden administration, in the name of diversity, is including bureaucrats everywhere to determine who gets hired, who gets promoted, and who gets the relevant grants. This is something that people are afraid to talk about, and I don't like to talk about, but do we want to head into a country which other countries have gone down this path, in which they say X number of people of this background have to be um, uh, government employees here, or grants have to go there. It always results in very hard feelings, and when you begin to hire people by that, you're not always hiring the best people. And I think Americans have to ask themselves, as we train the new generation of doctors, as we train the new generation of air traffic controllers, as we train the new generations of engineers, which determine the viability of our manufacturing as we compete with companies abroad, are we going to continue to hire the best, allow the best to be promoted, or are we going to determine in, going to fall back into some sort of um, third world country in which we divide our nation by what other countries would call tribes, might be religious, whatever. Um, I'll repeat an anecdote I talked about last week, which I don't think the National Press Corps has picked up on, but they should pick up on. Uh, not long after President Biden took office, two Democrat senators, Tammy Duckworth and Maisie Hirano, uh, one from Illinois and one from Hawaii, said that they would not vote for any more President Biden's appointees if they were white men unless they were gay. Now, that's an awkward thing to talk about. It's kind of scary that we had two U.S. senators taking such a divisive pos position. But then we had a legal journal, did a little bit of research a couple months ago on the judicial appointments by President Biden. 97 judicial appointments. The author of this article, I talked to her, was not even for or against this. She really had no opinions on what she found. But of the 97 new judges, only five were white men. And at least two of those five, might be more, were gay. So at least when it comes to judicial appointments, President Biden is following the path of a kind of a dislike, almost hatred, for people who used to make up uh, the majority of this country. I hope more studies are done along those lines, and I hope there's a little bit of outrage, because I have a feeling President Biden, um, President Biden may be following down the same path when it comes to other appointees, and quite frankly, doing all he can to get the same t sort of ratios when it comes to government spending, or trying to do this when it comes to businesses that do business with the government. We recently heard as well that the Biden administration is doing what they can to penalize frugal borrowers. And what they want to do is if you want to borrow money from a bank and you're a good credit risk because you're not a spendthrift, they feel that you ought to have to pay a higher interest rate because they want to subsidize people who spend all their money and don't save money, and they feel those people should get a lower interest rate. 
I think this diversity has come out of control. There's a huge cost related to it. We have heard in a committee that I'm on that there are bureaucratic um, diversity professionals who are making $200,000 a year in our, our universities. More of these people are gonna have to be hired by private business. It's first of all at a time when we have a labor shortage. And so far as there are people looking for new jobs, those jobs should be in manufacturing, in construction, in agriculture, even in tourism, wherever you look, we need more people, not more highly paid bureaucrats who when they look at people, solely view people by race or gender or sexual preference. In any event, I hope the press does a better job of going through President Biden's recommendations line by line in the budget and see whether they are the type of things we would like to see for a country that is in deep danger by the overall, overall amount of debt we have. And particularly, I hope the press corps hones in on these new bureaucrats as to exactly what they are doing since their job is not to do anything productive, but just make sure that everybody in the federal government looks at people as a token of race or gender or sexual preference. Thank you. I, uh, I'm told here I should yield another two minutes to